Hi, welcome back to part two of my uh, portrait retouching from the Frodo's Frodo raw file. Um, again, I'll put links down below to the original raw file on the Frodo's Frodo forums. Um, in the first part, we processed the raw file in Darktable. In the second part, I'm going to take the finished file into the GIMP and I'm going to do some more detailed edits on it, including uh, retouching the skin using um, Wavelet Decompose. So I've exported the file now from Darktable. I'm using quite a high qu quality uh, image here, but I'm using the 8-bit JPEG because that's all the GIMP can handle. Um, if I was using Photoshop, I'd probably use a 16-bit file. Uh, now I'm going to open it with the GIMP. The GIMP in version 2.10 will be able to deal with high bit depth files, and that's what you should use if you're going to, uh, if you li you're living in the future, basically. So, now one thing I should mention is that if you're on Ubuntu, you need the GIMP installed, so you can install that just by typing the GIMP, obviously. Here it is here. But you also need the Wavelet Decompose module installed. And if you see here, it comes from the GIMP plugin registry. Um, package Wavelet Decompose, here we are. Okay, so you need to have that installed, just uh, install that through the Software Center and once that's installed it becomes available in Filters, Generic, Wavelet Decompose. So, the first thing I should mention as well is that I'm following Patrick David's um, technique that he's got posted on his blog here. Again, I'll put the uh, links to the various blog posts uh, down below the video. But this um, is a general work, part, you know, this is one of his blog posts where he works through his general uh, wavelet decompose method, and I'll be using a simplified version of that here. If you want to see the more detail on this, obviously just check out his blog. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, come in here and do the wavelet decomposing. So. On this image, there's a few blemishes and things which are probably going to need to be done with uh, either cloning tool or um, the heal tool later. But uh, this time through, I'm going to do the wavelet decompose first. So let's go into the uh, filters, generic, wavelet decompose. I like to use six layers. It's really just a matter of how much uh, work you want to do and how much detail you want to have. Uh, now let's go through exactly what you get from this. So it takes this original image and it creates a whole bunch of new new um, layers from that. And basically I'm going to hold shift and click on this eye, but you can see that this starts with the finest details. And as you go up the different wavelet scales, you get more and more of the detail coming through. So I'm shift clicking each time to just show this. So these are obviously the coarsest details and these are the finest. And the final one is mostly just chroma information. Okay, so the general technique is to um, work your way down removing uh, those areas or those, those sort of details that you uh, want to smooth out in the skin. So I'm going to start with the largest, and there's a few sort of, uh, if we look at the original image, there's a few kind of blemishes and things here which are coming up on the largest wavelet scale. So I'm just going to use the heal tool uh, on those. So basically with the heal tool you just control click on a, on a source, which should be like a smooth area, and then you click on the area that you want to smooth out or uh, heal. So I'm just doing that, clicking on a new source nearby the spot that's the spots that I want to cover and let's shift click on this again to show all layers. You can't really see at this point. Again look at Patrick's um, blog post if you want to see more detail on this but I'm going to go down to the next layer I'm just going to remove these sort of spots. Obviously I need to have the correct layer selected. Okay, control click and then click, control click, click, control click, click. So 
this spot on the nose here. Alright, so you can probably already see that these blemishes are starting to smooth out now. Okay, there's this thing here. Smooth that out on this layer. I might just grab it and smooth it out on this layer as well. Okay, so you can see that that blemish is now completely gone. Just by using wavelet scale 4 and 5, I've cleaned out that. Uh, I think it was like a, a small scar or even just a just a scratch or she just you know, touched her face before the shot was done, but that's now completely gone because that was quite a coarse thing. You can see these blemishes on her chin. They're now starting to, starting to smooth out. So let's go do some more retouching. Now, what I should mention is the technique that... Um, that Patrick David uses is to sort of select regions in the image that look kind of uh, similar from like a texture point of view and from a lighting point of view so he sort of selects this kind of area. So I, what I'm doing now is I've, I'm kind of finished with my blemish work. I'm going to come back and retouch uh, on the full image at the end. But the next thing I'm doing now is working on the pores of the skin. Now obviously I don't want to create a mannequin so I'm just selecting those areas that I think could do with just... So I think I just want to do this area here where there's pause, this area here where there's pause, and that's probably about it. So I'm just going to use control select to remove these areas here which don't have pause. Something like this. Just smooth off the corner of that. It's starting to look pretty good and now I'm going to pull in just in here. Okay, I think those are the, the two areas that I'm gonna, gonna work on. So let's select this here. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take my selection and feather that quite a bit, probably sort of 25, it depend, depends on the size of your image and so forth, but what that does is it blends in the corner so it's not a hard transition around the corner of the selection. The next thing I'm going to do is do a blur. So let's go filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're dealing with large sort of features here. So I'm going to use a large value here. Obviously this takes a bit of trial and error. That's probably too much because I've now completely obliterated all of the detail. So I'm just going to control Z that, bring back the detail. And let's go back into our filters, blur. Gaussian blur, 25 was way too much, let's try 15. We have a preview here, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's some detail left there, but um, you know, you don't want to obliterate all of the detail from the skin. Okay, so that's, that's wavelet scale 4. Obviously I'm going to work my way down, making sure that I shift click on this eye to select the view of it in here but also just doing a normal click to make sure that I have that selected so let's go filters blur Gaussian blur and we need to back this off with each um, each layer because we're dealing with smaller and smaller items and they're easier and easier to obliterate but you can see here these pores I'm gonna back that off even a little bit more as you drag it it's pre-application of the blur and once you let go it has the blur applied. So let's shift click on here so that we can see. You can already see the, the pores are now almost completely blended and I would say that this skin texture here looks quite similar now to this skin texture here so I would normally stop at this point but I'll go back to the next wavelet um, scale and pull a tiny bit out just for demonstration's sake. Let's do 
2 or something like that. Shift click on that to bring that. See, I think that's too much now. Let's do Control Z twice. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do Control Shift A to get rid of that selection. You can see now that that skin is is uh, quite smooth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this original layer invisible, and I'm going to do a new from visible. What that means is I've just merged all of these wavelet scales and the wavelet residuals because these are the ones that were visible into this new visible layer. So now I can shift click on here just to show this layer and this is my final final image which has had all of this um, work merged into one. Now I'm going to do my final retouching with the heel tool. Let's reduce the size of this brush slightly so we don't want to use too massive a brush and I'll probably fast forward this section but what I'm basically doing is I'm coming in and I'm coming in here and I'm basically control clicking on my source and then you know using the normal click on my destination and I'm just going through and I'm going to get rid of all of these little blemishes using control mouse wheel to zoom in and out control click to select a source and then clicking again and then so I'm just going to do all these little blemishes which now this is this is the part that you don't let your client know that you even do. You should basically they shouldn't even know that this happens. Um, just let them have the the fantasy that they really do look as good as the final image. So there we go. That little red spot's probably still got a little bit there. So if you're dealing with changing colour, often the rubber stamp tool can be good a good starting point. See how I've now added a little bit of that color, we'll pull it from down here. So now the heel tool has a bit more of a, a, a neutral base to work with. We don't want to obliterate too much detail. Okay, let's just finish this off. I'll fast forward the rest of this. Okay, and now I think I have my final image. So you can see that we've smoothed the skin, but we haven't smoothed it so much that it looks like a plastic mannequin. Um, obviously this is completely a matter of taste. I suspect Patrick David would have a fit. I've gone, probably gone far too far for his way of thinking. But overall, we've got our skin nice and smooth, and we've got rid of all of the little blemishes and things which could distract from you know the beautiful model that we've got here. Now the final thing that I'm going to do is now that we've removed all of these small details I'm going to do a final probably what I'll do at first is save this file uh, as an XCF this will save all of this detail so we can go back uh, to any of these layers we could obviously go back to the original image if we want and compare to our our final result you can see that the you know we haven't gotten rid of all of those pores we've we've got rid of all of the blemishes there if I click on and off so the final thing as I was saying was to do a uh, so I'm just going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to do my sharpening. Now, the reason I've duplicated the layer is you probably want to sharpen. If you're going to produce a smaller version of this you probably want to sharpen that separately. Um, so it's good to have an original unsharpened uh, version of the image that you can always go back to. So let's go to our filters. We're going to enhance unsharp mask. Now I can uh, control middle as it alt middle click Alt middle click to increase the size of this window. Now we're going to drag just into this area that we're interested in sharpening. The eye is probably uh, an important area. Now 
I never do more than like 1.5 in here. I find the halo is just intolerable. But again, this is uh, up to you. Now you can see that we're sharpening these pores and things, so we increase the threshold to, to make it so that we're not sharpening the pores, but we're sharpening these more contrasty areas. 15 to sort of 25 is what I find works reasonably well. And then we just have the amount of sharpening which we can we can fiddle with. But we get the nice sharpening here, happening here on the eyes, brows, and we get the, the hair sort of popping a bit. Um, and obviously the, the eyes popping out as well. But we're not sharpening as you can see as I drag it and then let go. These smallest features in the skin are not changing. Okay, that's my final image. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.